Hey guys, and welcome to the next episode. In this episode, we're gonna take things to the next level, as we're gonna give George and William, our trustworthy NPC skeletons, sight. Sight, which they will need in the future episodes to actually start fighting back. However, we do not want to create super skeletons who can look through the walls of our game. We want them to have a direct line of sight, and only in case of a direct line of sight, they should actually be firing projectiles. So that's what we're going to be making in this episode. Let's get coding. Do you want to learn how to design and make games? Or maybe you just want to know how Godot works? Then subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on anything. Also, if you got any questions about this tutorial, Godot, game development or the game development that I do personally, you can ask your questions down in the comments below or you can find me on my Twitch stream. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The descriptions, the links and the schedule of that Twitch stream can be found in the descriptions below. I'll see you there. So to get started, we first have to give George and William their maximum sight, the range at which they can see things. To do that, I'm gonna go over to the scene of George and I'm gonna be adding a area 2D on the George. Now, immediately rename that area sight and we're gonna add a coalition shape to it so that we can set the shape in the inspector as a circle and I've been fiddling around a little bit and a circle or radius of 525 seems to be nicely with the map as we have set it up currently. But you probably want to fiddle around a little bit with that number for your specific game. It also depends on, on what the viewport is that you're, that you're working on. So fiddle around with that, make sure you feel like it's, uh, it feels right. That's uh, important for player balance and, and uh, battle mechanic balance. Um, now that we have set that up, we have to make sure that um, the signals are coming out of this um, area 2D. So we're going to be connecting the body entered signal and we're going to be connecting the body exited signal as we want to know when the player enters the site of our enemies and we want to know when it exits the site of the enemies. That way our enemy can know when it should and should not no, or no longer have to verify whether it has a direct line of sight and based on that of course we're going to make the um the skeleton shoot or fire back or maybe walk up to us and immediately engage um, so with that done i'm going to prepare these functions and i'll be right back to you now before we build the functions we actually have to be doing two things first of all i'm going to be defining the player as a variable by doing so i'll be able to verify that whatever enters the area 2D of our enemy is actually the player. Because there could be many more things area entering this area 2D. Projectiles, um, bullets, uh, arrows, bolts, uh, but even uh, the enemy could be colliding or the area 2D could be detecting the walls or the uh, crates that are part of the game world. So we want to make sure that it doesn't detect anything uh, unnecessary or, or weird. So we get the note layer um, under the parent because if you look in our map scene George and William are the enemies which both in inherit from uh, George his script so George and William if we take their parent that will be the map scene and if we take the node player of on the map scene we actually get where we want to be with that done we will also need a variable player in range to verify whether the player is in range or not now with that done, I'm going to overwrite these functions with the functions that I've written so the function names stay exactly the same and I see I have a small indentum problem here. Let's quickly fix that. There we go. So when the body, which we called site, is entered, we verify if that body, which is returned um, as a variable, is actually the player and that player being, of course, the node we have retrieved right there. Now, if that is true, we said that the player range is true. The player is actually in range. And we print it so that we can actually test our functions and the code that we're going to be writing in this tutorial. We're going to be verifying that in the editor that it works to get some feedback. 
Now, as soon as the player exits the area 2D, which is side of the enemy, we again verify, if, first of all, if that is actually really the player. And then we set the player in range to false and we print that the player in range is false. Now, let's quickly test this to see if this works and then we can move on to actually direct line of sight verification. So right here, as we spawn into the game, we are in one area 2D of the first skeleton right there. I believe that's George. And it says right here underneath in the, ed in the editor that player is in range true. And it says that one time because we're only in one area 2D. If I move down here, we get a second player range is true. And that would be from William, the skeleton, which stands a little bit further away. Again, if I move away here, you can see that both of these are now turned false. And if I move into this area again, it's true. And if I move away, it's false. So that's working perfectly fine. Now we have to start working on verifying whether there's a direct line of sight. And that's where it starts to get complicated, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know, let's do it. Now, to make that function to verify whether we have a direct line of sight, we gotta do two things first. First of all, we need a variable in which we can put the results. So in our case, it's going to be a player is in sight, not just in range. We can actually have a visual connection. Then we need to define a new function or we have to call a new function. I'm gonna call this within the physics process function as we're gonna be needing some physics for this. And I'm gonna call this function site check. Now down here, I'm gonna be building that function and to start, I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call the variable the space state. Now that space state is going to get the world and we're working in a 2D game, so I'm going to get a 2D world. And I'm going to be getting the direct space state. Now what this does is that the function get world 2D and with the um, added function direct space state is gonna get a snapshot of the world with all their 2D physics or physics bodies inside of it. Uh, and with that space state, with that sort of image, we can do some calculations. So next I'm gonna do a site check. And that site check is going to take the space state. So it's gonna take that, that image with all the physical bodies inside it and we're gonna be uh, intersecting a ray. So we're gonna be casting a ray. Now you could cast a ray with a ray node, but you can cast a ray from code as well, uh, just like this. Now this intersecting ray is gonna need a couple of properties. So first it needs the position from where it should start the cast. Now that's the position of the enemy itself. And as we're writing in the enemy script, we can just say position. Then it needs the position where it needs to cause the ray to. Now that is going to be the player position. And remember, we can just say player because we have defined player on the top in the script here. So it's gonna take the position of that node. Then we can add anything that it can exclude or should exclude from that ray. And it should because we don't want it to be interacting with itself, which it would be if we don't exclude it. So we're gonna exclude itself. And as you can see, I'm creating an array and it says in the help text so that we can make an array of excluding um, physical bodies that it needs to exclude. So if you wanna exclude more, you just add on top of the array. Next, we can verify a collision layer. And in this case, I'm just gonna um, take the collision mask of the node itself. So I'm copying over the collision mask of George itself. So George has a collision mask in one, two, three years apparently. I'm just copying over that with the collision mask command. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna take on every physical process frame is gonna be calling the function side check. So on every frame, we get the 2D world state or the space state and on that state, we're gonna be intersecting an array from the position of the enemy to the player position, excluding itself using the collision shape. But we don't want to do this every single time for every single enemy on the map. So we're gonna say that if player in range is true, then it should be doing this. So this makes sure that only the enemies that are in range of the player 
are going to be casting rays. So if you have 200 enemies on the map, but only eight are in range, only eight will be doing this all the time. And this is happening on every single physics uh, frame. So you don't want 200 enemies in the map, which are far outside your range, to be doing this as well. This is That will be wasting process of power on the device that you're programming for. So the next piece of code, that's actually quite simple. Uh, it's especially this that you have to really wrap your head around and like what's actually happening there. And it also, there's so many possibilities with space state. This is just one possibility. So this is definitely something you're gonna wrap your head around because that's just very valuable to know how that actually works. So uh, the sign checks this and it's actually going to return um, the nodes I believe as an array um, that the ray is intersecting with, or it's going to take the first node that it inter intersects with. Then, um, if it intersects with something, that's that's important. It's going to be checking if that collider name is player. So I believe it returns one node with what with what is it is colliding. Uh, but we do have to verify if it collided with anything because if it didn't collide with anything, we won't be able to collect the collider name. We would run into an error. So only if it collides with something, we verify first if that collider's name is actually player. So we verify if the node name that it collided with is player. In other words, if it saw the player. If that's the case, we're going to set player inside to true, and we print that so we can verify within our editor if this is working. And if that is not the case, if what it collided with is not the player, but it would, for example, be a wall, a few crates, some barrels, or another um, uh, enemy, or maybe you know, something else, um, we're actually going to be saying that, okay, the player inside is now false. And we're going to be printing that as well. Now, if we run this within the editor, and I'm going to be putting this up a little bit. You can already see that it's constantly printing player inside. It is just an endless loop, player inside, player inside, player inside, player inside. And it's false because I'm standing within the area 2D of George. But George has a wall in between us, uh, or between him and me, I should say. Um, if I walk out of here, well, you can't see it because, um, well, you actually can, because right now it says here underneath, instead of player inside, it's player in range. Remember that it also kind of collects or retreats whether we're still in range or not. So if I walk in here, you can immediately see start side is going, and that's the same for those two. Now, if I walk over this side, of course, they still cannot see me because of the wall right here. But if I move a little bit further, here you can see that William can start to see me. George still has some issues with this wall, and I'm not sure if I set this collision shape maybe a little bit too far. Um, but now we can see that now William can see me. That will be the skeleton on the right hand side, uh, but George cannot yet. And if I move a little bit further, now everything is true. Both of them are constantly returning true. So now both of them are able to see me. Now in the next couple of episodes, we could be linking their, uh, their logic, the logic of the skeletons. We can link that up. Um, that actually when they see me, when player inside is true, uh, that they can start firing projectiles or maybe do some other uh, logic. Or we could program them to actually start moving towards the player with them, some navigation 2D nodes. Um, and for example, we could program some melee attacks. Um, they would be able to follow the player around and maybe we have to build some delay that even when the player is out of their direct line of sight range, maybe they're still going to be looking for the player for like another couple of five seconds or something like that, or maybe three seconds. And that maybe then after they cannot find the player for three seconds long, maybe the, we want them to return to their original position where they stood guard or something like that. So yeah, that's it for today. Now our enemies, William and George, have some sight. And I named a bunch of things that you can do with this stuff, and we're probably gonna be doing every single one of those things within this tutorial series. So if you're interested to learn how to program all of those things, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on anything. Also, just a reminder, you can find me on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday. Links in the description and schedule are down in the description below. I'll see you there. Until then, have a good one. Keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you guys.